Hey everybody, Terry at D-Lab Electronics. On the bench behind me, we have another Gibson EH125 amp with noise issues. This is only the second one that's came through the shop. The first one, I really had to fool that thing to try to figure out why I couldn't resolve the noise. Come to find out, it was actually a design problem, which I solved. Now this amp has been at a couple shops for this issue. And the owner is pretty much fed up. He's got a lot of time and money invested into this thing and he still can't play it. So I'm gonna fix it. Let me show you what we have to do. All right, flipped her on. Show the cabinet, she's in beautiful condition. As soon as she warms up, I'll let you hear what it's doing. Already I hear some low level noise, possibly filter cap. All right, so listen as I adjust the volume pot. You can see it does not change the noise level at all. So you would assume that the volume pot itself is defective, but that's not the case. It's just wired in the wrong location on this amplifier. The volume pot actually feeds the input to the 6SJ7, and they only used two of its terminals. It's actually not grounded, so it can't pull the signal to ground. I'll show you that in the original schematic. So what I do is I swing that wiring from the input to being in between the 6SJ7 and the 6J5. Okay, And of course I make sure to ground the pod so it does its job. You'll see this in the video as we move along. So let's get this thing out of the cabinet give it a thorough inspection, I'll do my modification, and we'll go from there. All right, got the bottom screws removed. Pull the chassis up, look there. All right, so it does have new filter caps installed. And somebody also put in new coupling caps. So it's gonna make my job pretty easy. There's that volume pot, there's a the wiring going to the input of the preamp. So I'm going to move that wiring over do some minor changes and let's retest it. All right, so I'll cut to the new schematic so you can see what this modification is. Pretty much though, we're gonna take the three input jacks, they're gonna go through 68K resistors and they're gonna land on pin four, which is the input to the 6SJ7. Then the output of the SJ7 is gonna go through capacitor to the high side of the volume pot, will ground the low side of the pot and then the center conductor of the volume pot will go to pin 5 of the 6J5 inverter tube. So what I'm going to do is just disconnect the high side of the input jacks. I don't know if this was stock. But now I'm going to string 68K resistors from these three terminals to pin four of the 6SJ7, so the input will be wired. Sorry if my hands get in the way. It's kind of a tight little lamp to work on. Just want to show you the process. Yeah, everything's getting in the way. All right. So there is the first 68K going to that jack. We're going to bring one from here to there and from there to there. And then the input will be wired. After that, we're going to move over to the volume pot. So there is one other change that we're going to do on this input. Currently, the resistor going to ground is supposed to be a 10 meg. You can see it's a little over 15. It's way out of tolerance, but it doesn't matter because we're going to be changing that resistor out with a 2 meg. Okay, so let me get that out, get these others hooked up. Well, there we go, our 68Ks going to each of the input jacks, they're all tied together here. one up here, blocking the camera again aren't I, 
Alright, then we come down here to the tube. And we got our new 2 meg resistor to ground. Input wiring is complete. So our next step is here. This is pin 8. Okay, Pin 8 right now has a cap that goes direct to the inverter. We're going to lift this cap. We're going to install a new cap from pin 8 to this lead that used to go to the input jack. That comes over to the volume control. Then we're going to come out of the center of the volume control and go to the inverter. So you see we're simply putting the pot in line with the signal between the preamp tube and the inverter. Alright, modifications complete. You actually end up removing more parts than what you put in. It's a simple matter of rearrangement. Alright, let's get the tubes in and see if it quieted her down. Here we go. Same test as before. The amp is on. I'm just going to turn to volume control. See, there's no hiss, okay? You may not even think the amp's working, but it is. So here's an input. Nothing. So you can see now the amp is actually amplifying with the volume control and relatively no noise. Alright, so here's a guitar hook to her. Now the sensitivity on these amps is always kind of low because of the 6SJ7. You can put in a 6AC7 and get a lot more gain out of this amp. I'm going to check these tubes and then we'll install the 6AC7. Alright, now I got the 6AC7 installed. Quite a bit more gain. See up that is the tube that I would prefer running in the Gibson EH125. I've got things wrapped up on the preamp section. Now I want to verify the resistors over here on the inverter tube because I see here that somebody's like parallel to a couple and this does have those extreme old style resistors that might be way out of tolerance which will affect gain. So I'm going to clean this up. Okay, I cleaned up the wiring on the inverter tube socket. I did find one resistor out of tolerance and that was the 100K. You saw the two that were stacked together. But I also put a little, as we call, Easter egg in here for you guys. If you look right here, you'll see I added this little terminal board, okay? No, I didn't add that to just make things nice and neat. I actually added that because I did a slight modification to this tube socket. Now, pins four and five are jumped, and also pins three and six. So what this little modification will do is either allow you to run the stock 6J5 inverter tube or now you can pop in a 6N7 directly, get a little more gain and different response out of the inverter stage. All right, so for the fun of it, we'll do a little gain comparison, okay? I have the stock tubes installed, the 6SJ7, 6J5. Here is the 6AC7 preamp, and here is our 6N7, okay? So what I'm going to do, I've got the VTM rigged down to the speaker. I'm just going to bring up the volume to where we see mid-scale. I'm at the 1.5 volt AC scale on the VTVM, all right? Using an audio generator around 500 hertz as our input. So I've got the amp warmed up. Let's test it in its stock configuration. Watch the meter. Alright, there's my mid scale. I'm all the way up on volume, all the way to 10. Now let's kill it. We'll put in the AC7. Let her warm up. Let's see what that does to the gain. I've had this VTVM for a long time, I don't use it that often. Man, where's the keyway here, guys? There it is. But for this kind of testing, it's great.
because they were actually designed back in the day to work on this old stuff. So it's nice to break it out. I'm going to pause a little bit, let it warm up, and we'll resume the game test. I believe we're warmed up enough. Now I have removed the 6SJ7. The 6AC7 is installed with the stock inverter tube. Let's recheck our gain. Here we go. Remember, we're looking for a mid-scale. Oh yeah. There's about mid-scale. And I'm at 7 now on the dial. Before, I had to go to 10, right? So we've picked up quite a bit of gain using the 6AC7. So the next step is, let's pull out the 6J5 and put in the 6N7 inverter and see if we pick up even more steam. Final configuration time, guys. Now we have the 6AC7 and the 6N7 installed. The stock tubes have been removed. Let's check our gain. Alright, now mid scale is about 8. So I am having to drive the 6N7 a little bit harder than the 6J5. So the next question would be how do these sound sonically? You know, with like a guitar? So let's test with the guitar the 6N7 and the 6J5 and see which one's more pleasing to the ear. So you guys know I don't play, all right? But what I'm just going to do is strum the guitar. Currently we have the 6N7 installed. Then we'll go back to the 6J5. So here is the 6N7. J5 and I'm not going to interrupt the volume setting. All right, back on the air. Now we have the 6J5 installed. Same deal. Here is the guitar. I myself cannot tell any difference but at least this opens up the possibility of running two different inverter tubes on your amp with no modifications after you put in the jumpers. All right, so I'll post the newest schematic right now so you can take a look. This new schematic shows the installation of the 6AC7 and the 6N7 tube also showing the updates to the inverter tubes um, octal socket pinout. Okay. So you pretty much add the jumpers and you have to rearrange a couple resistors that were using those unused pins at the time. But now you have the option of plugging in a 6J5 or a 6N7 and the beauty is the 6N7s only sell for a couple bucks. So you may find that it's more tonal to put in one of those tubes. I don't know. Experiment. Have fun. Alright, so that was a great vintage amp repair with a couple little tech tips involved. If you guys need this information, I'll be updating my website or if you'd like me to send you the schematics direct for the EH125 updates, just shoot me an email and get it right out. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again at D-Lab Electronics.